well we are there uh, at the end of 15 days of play this is where we are all at two players there in the middle one rafael nadal the other novak djokovic they are all ready to battle out for the australian open the first grand slam of the year who will walk away with that coveted crown we'll come to know in a little while from now when the big action starts there uh, in melbourne but to get a perspective on what could go right could it be you know a second uh, grand slam australian open title for rafael nadal or will it be number 7 for novak djokovic we'll find out as the match progresses but to get a perspective of what could go there in that big bang tennis a classic of a match that we are expecting to happen two experts in the studio joining us yuki bamri somebody who's played for india for long yuki welcome to the show thank you got of sight as always with us uh, an expert there on tennis commentating this time in the studios with us good afternoon uh, pleasure to have both of you here yuki looking at it first up Nadal versus Djokovic not much to choose from looking at the last time in 2012 when the two champions met this time around do you expect something different i expect it to be another battle another you could easily have another 5 hour match of a cracker of a match mm -hmm. going on and it's very very difficult to choose i think Djokovic being a world number 1 has obviously been in sensating form but you can't count Rafael Nadal out either okay uh, gorov last game that we saw 5 hours 52 minutes was the action in 2012 this time around do you expect it to be much shorter much snappier or another five set long I, I, epic battle i think battle? Uh, much shorter just by definition because they've changed the rules and so, the clock now between shots and also of course a super tie break in the in fifth set, set. Uh, but having said that it's interesting that jokovic said after the semi final that if he had to he'd buy tickets to watch this match <laughs> <laughs> that's how exciting it's going to be Okay uh you know you keep when you look at this kind of battles you know two two stars there in the world not much to choose from if you purely look at stats you know 52 matches between the 53rd meeting between the two uh having said that would you say uh, on on the hard court surface Djokovic is maybe 2 inches better than Nadal probably you could say that he obviously has a better head to head he's won a lot more on the hard courts as well and he's a six time australian open champion he's going for a seven crown which is going to be the maximum any any man open there has won it so True. that's why he is a slight favorite if you can call it as a favorite mm -hmm. uh gorav uh, when you look at the rivalry between the two you know not much to choose from 27 uh, 25 in terms of wins but you know if you look at uh, the way nadal's played in this particular australian open not dropping a set till the time he's reached the final uh, would you say uh, a better chance for nadal as compared to djokovic or nothing to choose from when it comes to the final well I I interesting you know when you especially when you see the semi finals um and nadal beating sitsipas uh, the youngster from sure. greece dropping just six games throwing mm. the gauntlet almost to djokovic and then djokovic comes in the semi final and mm. demolishes the frenchman lucas puil in four games okay. you know and you see the stats in that particular match and amazing i've never seen such stats on unforced errors mm -hmm. only five unforced errors for djokovic and 24 winners I mean, almost near perfect tennis i think both men are really mm. peaking in their form and and the significant thing is you know one had almost written off nadal because of his injuries mm -hmm. this is the first tournament he's really playing after the us so open where also he conceded the semi final because of his injuries Uh, but he seems to be in fit absolutely peak form mm -hmm. you can when you go into this kind of tournaments you know the grand slams it does it become difficult because the player was off the radar you know nobody noticed nadal to come there you know many expected nadal to come there you know play a few rounds maybe concede because nobody he he missed he skipped brisbane uh, having said that now reaching the final suddenly the focus is on nadal back again uh, you know does that leave a player in a you know better situation reaching the final well i'm i'm sure when he walked out there when he started straight up and he wasn't really expecting to be in the final like so he hasn't played since the US Open he's True. been out 4 or 5 months and it's very very difficult especially in the first tournament back having not had any match play to mm -hmm. come out the way he has but he since day 1 since round 1 he hasn't dropped a set he's been impressive he's serving very well he's winning a lot of free points from his forehand so he's definitely looking the best that we've seen in in, in a long time uh gora when you look at nadal's serve you know that's considered to be one of the weapons that you know he's brought it out very well in this edition of hostel open you know the number of first serves the number of second serves in you know does that clearly leave an advantage with nadal over djokovic you know it's interesting it's now um, and despite all the glories 17 grand slam titles sure. he's still reinventing himself and and that's the hallmark of a champion mm. remodeled his serve in this off season true sure. and he is serving now much straighter Uh, and with a different action a much sleeker action mm -hmm. also putting less pressure on his knees which are True. prone to injury and his average speed has gone up almost 11 miles 
uh, per hour, which is quite significant okay. on both the first serves and second serves. And one interesting stat I wanted to share actually, which is on his first serves at this US Open, 81% of the points won by True. Nadal with an average rally of 3.5 or so. You know, so he's just killing it thanks to his first okay. serve. And okay, let's look at this graphic play that's coming on your screens. You know, if you look at the two players there, Djokovic 31, uh, Nadal 32, world ranking world number one versus world number two. Grand Slam titles, the two between them have shared 31 Grand Slam titles. And Australian Open, Djokovic has won it six times before Nadal, the first time that he won it way back in 2009. In terms of style of play, right-handed, left-handed and head-to-head -head Grand Slam finals, Nadal leads uh, over Djokovic by four finals to three. Well, time now, we'll discuss that particular element. But uh, before that, let's slip into a short breather here. On the other side, we'll keep this discussion going on who's going to make it count tonight. आपकी यात्रा के दौरान आपकी कार का इंजन जूझता है गर्मी से स्लज से और घिसाव से हराइए गर्मी को स्लज को और घिसाव को सुरक्षा की ढाल से सर्वो फ्यूचुरा जी प्लस सिंथेटिक इंजन ऑयल आपके कार इंजन की सुरक्षा ढाल जो दे ईंधन में 2% की बचत भी सर्वो फ्यूचुरा जी प्लस इंडियन ऑयल की पेशकश Welcome back. We are looking at that big Australian Open final, the men's singles final. We'll decide in a little while from now who's going to be the new champion of the year 2019, the first Grand Slam of the year, the Australian Open. We'll have to wait and watch. But we've got the two experts there, Yuki and uh, Gaurav in the studios. Yuki, coming back to you, how, how would you look at it? You know, uh, Gaurav spoke out, he redefining his serve, not putting that much pressure on his knees. Uh, has things changed from the Nadal we saw in, that Austra uh, in the US Open semi-final where he lost? and to the one that you see now he definitely looks a change player and i think it's a little bit forced as well you know mm -hmm. he, he had to he needed this was the only element of his game which was if you could say missing when he had a lot more free points on his serve and he's doing that now in this the stats show that he's been a lot more aggressive he's been winning points off straight off his serve mm -hmm. less rallies and that's a very very dangerous nadal because we all know he can run all day he can you know as as a rallies lengthen he is more dangerous but if he's shortening up the points i think your coach will definitely have his hands full tonight okay uh, Gaurav, when you look at Nadal, who's go redefined, you know, many elements of his game in this Australian Open, Djokovic comes that straight and simple. He's got that straight, simple formula. Does he bring something or does he up his ante in this final? Or, you know, it's a straight, simple game that Djokovic brings to a Grand Slam final. I think Djokovic still follows the same mechanics, solid game from mm -hmm. the baseline, all, all aspects. In fact, we're talking about Nadal upping his serve. Djokovic still, I think, in my books, remains returner. the best return of serve. So, you know, very little to choose from and every time these players, again, they lift their game when it comes to the crunch. We saw it in the semi-finals. Today in the finals, I think again, they're going to produce their best. You can't even say it's going to be any nerves. They're mm. veterans. They've seen so many Grand Slam finals. What goes, I think, slightly in Djokovic's favor is he's never lost a final at the, at the Australian Open. True. And I think that's a big psychological advantage. A big psychological advantage uh, that Gaurav says. But Yuki, uh, looking at the way Nadal plays, when Nadal has never dropped a set reaching the final, he's never lost a Grand Slam final. He's been in that situation before. This time around, would you say, you know, we cut that <laughs> <laughs> Djokovic advantage with that Nadal stat? You could. No, absolutely. That's said the soil to choose from. Nadal has been dominant, hasn't, hasn't lost, uh, you know, a set. Whereas Djokovic, I think, has lost, um, in his previous rounds, has lost a set each against Shabavalov, against Medvedev. I don't think it's really his level of play. Probably his concentration, which is going to be, you know, at the highest level today and he can't afford drop it. But yes, I mean, Nadal, even though he's won just one Australian Open, he's been in five finals before. Mm. So they know each other's game well. They, you know, Nadal definitely has been improved, is a better player and looks very motivated as well, even now. Okay, let's take a look at another graphic here, you know, on the rivalry between the two players there, Nadal and Djokovic. Head to head, 52 matches between them. This is the 53rd meeting between them. Not much to choose from. Djokovic just having a two-match advantage there over Nadal. 27 wins to Djokovic to 25 to Nadal. Well, looking at that particular static, uh, statistics, uh, Gaurav, do you somewhere feel Nadal feels a bit cheated coming into that Australian Open, you know? He's reached that finals many a times before. The only time he's won it is way back in 2009. Somewhere he feels cheated, it's time that he gets another shot at, you know, winning that Australian Open after 10 years. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and of course, another big record beckons him. True. If he wins it here, 
the first player in the in the open era to win to win all four Grand Slams twice. At least twice. Yeah. You know, so that's a big deal. Uh, but having said that, uh, you know, the only chink in the armor uh, which I saw in Djokovic's progress to the final, and Yuki mentioned it, that match against Medvedev. True. I was watching that, and he looked kind of out of sorts. Both the players were really tired. It was a very hot. Uh, mm -hmm. It was in the afternoon, so very hot conditions. But after the match, Djokovic said that he was feeling stiff in the back as well. And that's the only time one saw a slight chink on his fitness. Mm -hmm. But thereafter, in the semi-finals, he came back so strongly. Uh, but, you know, if, if this match progresses into five sets, I think on fitness, the way these two are today, I would give the edge to Nadal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yugi, looking at that quarter-final against Ki Nishikori, you know, he also got a game where he didn't have to play much. One set, and I believe 4-1 in the second, where he... Nishikori conceded that game. You know, does that leave a player with, you know, a bit more freshness, I would say, when you reach the finals, you know? Your seventh game there inside a fortnight, does that leave you with a little more fresh pair of legs? Absolutely. I think Djokovic really needed that. Um, he's coming off really two four-setters, you know, like Sat said, it, it was against Medvedev, we see him struggle a little bit at the at the end of the match, and, and Nishikori as well had come a five-setter, but I thought that that would have been a very tough match for Djokovic, and to win Grand Slams, you need to have something left in the tank. You know, if, if you've seen former champions as well, they've all gone, they've all breezed through their initial rounds. So you need something and you need a little bit of that extra to win a Grand Slam. And I think Nishikori retiring did Djokovic a big, big favor. Okay, Nishikori just keeping that uh, quarterfinal tie or, you know, losing or giving up that quarterfinal tie did uh, help Djokovic. We'll have to wait and watch how things pan out as the big game starts in a little while from now. Let's slip into another breather here. On the other side, we'll keep looking at what's going right or wrong for either of the players. Stay tuned. Aapki yatra ke dauraan, aapki car ka engine joojta hai. Garmi se, sludge se, aur ghisaab se. Haraiye garmi ko, sludge ko, aur ghisaab ko. Suraksha ki dhal se. Servo Futura G Plus Synthetic Engine Oil. Aapke car engine ki suraksha dhal. Jode indhan me 2% ki bachat bhi. Servo Futura G Plus. Indian oil ki pesh kash. आपकी यात्रा के दौरान आपकी कार का इंजन जूझता है गर्मी से स्लज से और घिसाव से हराइए गर्मी को स्लज को और घिसाव को सुरक्षा की ढाल से सर्वो फ्यूचुरा जी प्लस सिंथेटिक इंजन ऑयल आपके कार इंजन की सुरक्षा ढाल जो दे इंधन में दो परसेंट की बचत भी सर्वो फ्यूचुरा जी प्लस इंडियन ऑयल की पेशकश Welcome back. We are still building up to the big Australian Open men's singles final that's going to begin in a little while from now. Yuki and Gaurav with us in the studios. Yuki, coming back, in terms of court positioning, is that where Djokovic has a better presence or, or you know, better success ratio over Nadal, uh, especially on hard courts? Well, I think it's backhand. That's the key here okay. uh, with w with Nadal. I think everyone has struggled, obviously, with the lefty forehand, but Djokovic has one of the best backhands in the world, and he counters that by being aggressive with it, by dictating the play. So that's mm -hmm. why I think that's one of the reasons why Nadal hasn't doesn't have a a better win uh, ratio against Djokovic than he has against the rest of the players. So. Mm -hmm. You know, these are two legends of the game. This is the epic rivalry that there is, and there's so little to choose from between them. But mm -hmm. you know, it's going to come down to to nitty gritty, a few points here and there at the at the end of the match. Mm -hmm. uh, Yuki made a mention about you know the backhand that's deadly. Uh, is that the second serve between the two players? The second serve is going to be crucial in today's final. Uh, both the players, yeah. how they how they use the second serve? You know, it almost comes down to every aspect of the game. But yeah, second serve, and again, Nadal has strengthened that aspect a lot. True. Uh, as I said, almost 11 miles um, mm -hmm. faster on his second serve. And again, as you see, especially from the uh, deuce court, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's um, uh, serving out wide, which is his strength. And from the ad court, he uses that to finish and kill with his forehand mm -hmm. on the third shot, you know, which is proving to be very, very uh, a great strength for him. Mm -hmm. Overall, in the balance, really, because uh, uh, it's really, I think, Nadal serve. Djokovic's return, which is going to be the crucial in this game. Uh, but once again, uh, Nadal, oh, back to his serve, he's only been broken twice mm -hmm. in the 80 service game so far at the Australian Open. So it's a big, big strength for him. 
also works as a double whammy because he conserves his energy, focuses on the return serve game mm -hmm. because he just breezes through his service games that much faster now. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Yuki, when you look at Nadal's or Nadal's you know, semi-final press conference, he said, uh, you need to adapt your game to your age. Djokovic believes that's not necessary. Djokovic <laughs> believes the other on you adapt the age to the game. How do you take it? You've been a player. How how do you take it? You know, which which is the best mantra suitable to survive? I think he's adapted his game because of the players. It's not really with with age. He has to improve. He's okay. had to improve with with great rivals, with with Federer, with with Djokovic, with Murray. I think they've all just pushed each other. With you know, up to a point where they all have to improve in order to get a win. I think all four of them have been fabulous for tennis, and that's when Nadal comes in with, with a better serve, with being closer to the baseline, with trying to finishing points earlier because he knows you know he's going to need that eventually. Against against fitter, stronger, and better guys like Djokovic. Uh, Goro, when you look at the semi-final, the four players that were in the semi-final, the two that lost in the semi-final, are they the future of men's tennis? Considering the the top top three still exist: uh, Federer, uh, Nadal, and Djokovic. You know, are the two guys who lost the semi-final are they the future of men's tennis? I, I would say so. Certainly, you know, uh, uh, emerging very very strong, and the way Sitsipas particularly beating the legend Federer. True. You know, it just augurs very well for the future for these youngsters. Uh, but at the same time, when you see those semi-finals, puts into perspectives that what a big gap there still mm -hmm. is between these top four players True. and the youngsters. Having said that, I think at <coughs> best another year or two for these four legends. Well, Murray is already retired. True. Uh, so for the remaining three, I would give it another couple of years max. But exciting that so many young players from their 19s, to the early 20s are fast emerging mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of the sport. Uh, Yuki, when you look at Nadal, you know, considering that he's got his first title on the Australian hard courts way back in 2009, looking for, you know, his second one there and looking to be, you know, the first player to in the, you know, to win two titles at least, every Grand Slam he's won it twice. Uh, having said that, how much of a pressure is it, you know, uh, on Nadal going into this final? I don't think they think like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's it winning a Grand Slam is is big motivation in itself. You know what comes after that is secondary. So Nadal's going to be excited. And he's going to he's you know he's he's going for that Australian Open. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 big enough. And and don't forget, I'm I'm pretty sure they're all chasing the Federer's twenty, 20 you know Grand 20 Grand Slam record as well. Both of them. Um, it'll be Nadal will be. Closer 18. with, you know, 18 with the French coming in, we could definitely count him as favourite there, which could be at the 19. So, there is so much to play for in this, you know, in this Australian Open. Okay, so much to play for. Gaurav, uh, when you look at this rivalry between the two, two they two enjoy yes. playing each other. Uh, uh, having said that, would you say somewhere, uh, what could be the crowd backing there? You know, the two players, num world number one, world number two. How could the crowd be divided there uh, <laughs> <laughs> at I, the Rod Laverary? I, I think the crowd is going to support whoever loses the first set. <laughs> Because everyone wants a full five-setter here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a classic match and everyone will want their money's worth. Mm -hmm. I think they've already got their money's worth just getting that ticket for this final. Okay. But I just want to uh, also highlight one thing we've spoken about Nadal serve. I think in terms of ground strokes, still one of the strongest. Mm -hmm. You know, the revs he gets on that ball uh, and as a result, the high kick, 3200 RPM, True. almost twice of any other pro. Mm -hmm. and. And that's because he really hits through the ball. If you see his follow through, it finishes actually above his left shoulder mm -hmm. against, against the traditional follow through, which is on the other shoulder. But uh, uh, Yuki, isn't it? What a remarkable ground shot that is. It is. No, uh, absolutely. One of a kind. You know, we've, there's been so much discussions on the amount of spin and the amount of power uh, that Nadal generates. But this is something I think that is just, you know, come learned from very, very young age and very difficult to teach. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, traditionally we all finish, you know, our, our rackets on the other shoulder. Whereas Nadal, even though sometimes out of position, it's because he has that unique action where he can generate so much pace and so much spin where he puts the opponent you know, in a defensive position. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, when you look at uh, Nadal and his success there on the hard courts, the last time he's beat Djokovic on a hard court is way back in 2013. You know, it's almost seven years now. Uh, having said that, you, you made a mention these th records don't play at the back of the mind of a player. Uh, but walking into a Grand Slam final, you know, somewhere deep down, uh, these stats generally, you know, I believe players stay out of mm -hmm. looking at the newspapers, but these stats generally are cropped up. You know, how does a player look at it, these kind of stats, you know, 
walking into that Grand Slam final there at the Rod Laver Arena? Well, in my opinion, I think when they step on court, you know, when, when, when it's called play, uh, everybody forgets about it. Okay. You know, uh, uh, being in situations where you have win loss records, um, you know, once you're there, you focus on your game plan. I'm sure you know, both of them come with a game plan, and, and that's what they're really going to focus on on, on what to do, it, especially at, at a Grand Slam because it's a five setter. There's so many mini battles that need to that need to be won, so they have to constantly, you know, be be a what's going on, be around them, be watchful, um, and having to adapt from each other. It's not a it's not a best of three set match where it's you know uh, two sets and, and that's it. You an opponent has a chance to come back each and every time, so they both will be wary of that and will have to adapt their game. So okay, let's take a look at a final graphic there in the head to head meetings, the last five meetings between the two players there, Nadal and Djokovic. Not much to choose from, you know. Uh, Djokovic has beaten Nadal. I think the last time that Nadal beat Djokovic was there in the Madrid clay 2017. In fact, correct that there 2017 and uh, 2018. Both the other is clay and grass where uh, Djokovic had one win and Nadal beat uh, Djokovic there in Rome in 2018. Looking at the stats going into this particular final, not much to choose from between the two. But who do you think is your favorite? Your favorite pick for the final between the two? <laughs> Too difficult. Very pick. very difficult question. Uh, tough pick. I would say 51-49 Nadal, uh -huh. Nadal at 5, but I think I'm stretching my neck there. Stretching my neck, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's still putting his money on a 5-setter there, Nadal versus Djokovic. So, Yuki, how would you look at that particular game uh, between the two? A 5-setter yeah. and who has the edge? I would definitely put money on being a 5-setter. I think the you know the head says Djokovic and the heart says <laughs> Nadal. <laughs> <laughs> the head says Djokovic, the heart says uh, Nadal. Uh, Gaurav, uh, when you when you look at uh, you know the Australian Open, the way it's panned out, uh, and the amount of 128 players that you saw on that single stuff, uh, any promise that you saw? Uh, youngsters definitely. The two we uh, talked about. Any other promising um, player that you uh, saw? You know, I think, and, and they're merging thick and fast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Zverev is another one who's uh, you know I think very go soon going to win a Grand Slam. Uh, but I think of these uh, players, and, and both uh, on the men's and the women's side, in fact the women's game getting even more unpredictable. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you really can't predict. Uh, the men's has been um, a lot more, you see the top right. four yes. winning every mm -hmm. Grand Slam, or at least three out of the four every year. But I think in the women, it's, it's a complete toss-up. Mm -hmm. It is. No, I mean, you, even the men's side, apart from obviously um, uh, Sitsi Pass being there, Zevrev, um, don't forget Dominic Thiem, who played yeah. played the finals of the French Open last year, Di Manoir from True. Australia, who, who, who lost to Nadal. So there's, I think, there's no great of players who are, who are going to come and going to challenge um, you know, the next generation uh, for, for future Grand Slams. Uh, Gaurav, you look at it, do you, do you see a change of card that looks very imminent in men's tennis now? I, or I would, or would so. you would you say you'll you'll extend it till the end of twenty? I, I would say so. Let's look at Federer, for example. I, uh, clearly, I, I think his best chance is at Wimbledon on grass, mm -hmm. uh, on hard court, struggling now. But he's had a great innings, and mm -hmm. so I would give another year or so max. And similarly for these two, Nadal's style is so abrasive, so hard mm -hmm. on the body, and he is remodeling all the time. But you know, it's a matter of time, maybe two years max. Djokovic, on the other hand, again, you know. To play singles at this level, um, two or three years max, they're both 31 and 32 now. So in the next two years, definitely, we should see a lot of change. Uh, Yuki, would you expect it to finish in straight sets? No. <laughs> it's never <laughs> happened before, just once. I, 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 just I, looking I, at the uh, history. I, I cannot see that happening in straight sets. I think they're just they're two good players. There's, you know, there has to be uh, one of those epic matches, and especially in Australia. I think they've had plenty of them. This is not a straight set match. Okay. Gaurav is making a mention it's not going to be that long because Nadal is closing up things pretty quickly. Uh, a five setter you predicted. Uh, uh, would you expect, since that you know the fifth set is now going to be a tie break, does that make things more juicier, more tighter for the two players there if it if it goes to the fifth set? Yes, yeah, certainly, and, and nerves definitely come in. Imagine a situation where a Grand Slam is pivoting on that final set, deciding tie break. So nerves will come in, but both these players are so seasoned okay. uh, that I, I'm sure they're going to try to finish it off even before that mm -hmm. eventuality. Uh, Yuki, how, how differently do you approach a Grand Slam final where the fifth set is now in a tiebreaker? Uh, does that does that make 
make it difficult for a player somewhere to adjust because you know uh, it's a tiebreaker at the end of the day the fifth set well it makes it interesting the nerves definitely come into play i know they you know having played this rule they have it in doubles uh, where you know as a 10 point tiebreak to finish it off as well mm -hmm. but I, i think it's a good change if you haven't really decided a winner till about 6 all in the fifth set you know there's no point playing those those extra games so mm -hmm. it, it it makes it entertaining definitely makes it entertaining for the crowd um but the nerves would i would see the nerves i could see the nerves come in being a grand slam final having one point to decide uh, you know and, and to make history okay you know uh, having said that 14 grand slams is what jokovic has he, if he gets the 15th one today he moves beyond pete sampras there uh, and uh, pete sampras there uh, who's got 14 there against his name uh, do you see that a possibility now definitely or? definitely and and don't forget he's won the last two true he won wimbledon and, and us so open so this will be third one in a row going great guns and only one man on this planet can can save him from doing that that's nadal <laughs> <laughs> uh, yuki your quick comment on how the things are shaping up the final just you know minutes away from starting uh, how do you look at it you know the final uh, where does nadal or where does jokovic have to bring something different or their a game to the team i think nadal has to stick to what he's been doing um we see in the past where uh, at times you try and change you try and adapt like jokovic but he has to stick to utilizing his strength you know serving great like he has using his forehand as much as he can and and jokovic on the other hand you know plays steady tennis doesn't make mistakes and and again i'm sure the back was mine would know to use his ground so to use his backhand to take the ball early and try and dictate play from there mm mm-hmm. Uh, got up the final is yet to begin you know not much of faction there on the ground but having said that you know if you look at the two if you look at the stats between the two seven grand slam finals five grand slam semi finals 17 other top finals between the two 13 other top level semi finals one olympic semi final between the two uh, all these stats do they matter at the end of the day when the two men walk out there at the rod lever arena i i think when it comes to these two not really it's a fresh day it's a fresh match i i want to add one point which which is one of the best things mm. the organizers have done that the australian open has moved the finals to an evening yeah, session, session locally it it is extremely hot in melbourne i've mm. lived in melbourne many years gets to 45 degrees so, daytime and that used to be really torrid mm. and you know terrible for tennis mm. now conditions perfect for tennis and it should be a real treat as two of the best players in the world mm. in ideal conditions i think we are in for a real treat Uh, Yuki, the women's singles final is still played early in the morning. The 7:30 start uh, Australian time. The men's final is is shifted to the evening. You know, does that you know does that leave the women cheated? You know, do they feel that you know our final also should have been in the evening? Uh, not really. I don't think it's going to be as grueling. Obviously, the mm. men's are playing five setters. The women's are playing three setters. So, so when it comes to that, the length of the match is not going to be. that long so it's not i don't think of course the heat is a huge factor but playing a three set match doesn't affect you that much where a five set a match could mm -hmm. be and of course you know like so said it is um it is a great thing that organizers have done to switching in the evening all the focus should be on tennis should remain on tennis and there should be you know no excuses let the best man win mm -hmm. uh gorav looking at this particular you know final there uh you know has the heat been such a big deterrent for the players this time 2019 or do you feel as compared to the previous years this time the heat the australian heat was much better i i think uh, the, it was hot uh, so australia is going through a heat wave right now but but also the option of covering the court so. is is a great one and then they have used that even during the daytime matches mm -hmm. and that brings a lot of comfort uh, and just uh, in, in terms of the temperatures actually uh, even with an open court there's a significant drop for 45 degrees at 2 in the afternoon now it'll be in the mid 20s so almost a 20 degree drop mm -hmm. that's how significant it is and in the mid 20s perfect conditions you think uh, is that a future of sports you playing indoors you're looking at the 2022 football world cup which could be played indoors <laughs> at least two stadiums are ready uh, in qatar where they they plan to host the 2022 you know world cup i uh, think is that is that the future of sports uh, that we're looking at in uh, well in, in terms of tennis i don't think so um australia actually all the slams or most of the tournaments also have the heat rule in sure. place so if it goes up to a certain degree um play stopped after the end of set they have that um and and as thing australia is on the only place where it is so so hot mm -hmm. during the day but most of the stadiums have covered courts now so if they need to use that they can always do that they have the heat rule in place i think it's um uh, you know tennis would probably still stick outdoors for most for most of the year okay tennis would stick outdoors for most of the year uh, got up uh, still time to start for that final uh, there between the two players you know how would you look at it today 
we've, we've spoken now of almost all the elements that could be there in the final. But any surprise element that either of the players could bring to the table today? I, I, I just hope and pray for all tennis lovers that both players stay fit. Mm -hmm. Both have had niggling injuries, both are in peak form coming into this final. Mm -hmm. And I just hope they keep their fitness and I think we'll be in for a real treat. Mm -hmm. The only surprise and a nasty one could be uh, uh, Djokovic is back or Nadal still has a strapped up abdomen mm. after his recent surgery. Hopefully touch wood, they will stay fit through this final. Yogi, looking at the final, any surprise element that you could think of the two players could bring to the table? Well, in the last slam that they played at, at Wimbledon, I think Nadal came to net a lot more, mm. um, especially in, in the fourth set. So that's something where he changed up tactics after rain delay. That's something, you know, we, we could see him doing it as well. But like I said, I think he's been aggressive. There's definitely uh, a, a better looking Nadal already so Djokovic would have his hands full coming into the match with you know a, a more aggressive Nadal sticking closer baseline and and putting adding more power um, to his shots. Mm -hmm. Gaurav the, the, the two have played 53 times before there you know at the big stage uh, you know your game inside out both the players know their game inside out so how differently do you prepare for a final when you come into this kind of a situation? I, I think the only person who uh, will be a little more wary now will be Djokovic. Mm -hmm. Nadal, there are no surprises on Djokovic's game. He's not changed his game at all in the last eight, nine years. Nadal now, uh, Djokovic is kind of guessing on his serve because he, he has been obviously watching him, uh, but he's not played him for a long time, especially on this surface, seven years back. Mm -hmm. It is a new invigorated N Nadal he's facing and therefore he's in for a bit of a surprise there. Mm -hmm. Both the players are still saying, yeah. you know, Nadal. Nadal is a favorite. I was, would you agree? Nadal is a favorite or Djokovic? Nadal with a, but only just. Okay, just Nadal there. Yeah. But Yuki has put it very smartly. He said, you know, you know, his heart is going for one, <laughs> the mind is going for another. Well, we'll leave it there. You know, I think uh, we'll leave it there at the end of the day. You know, I think I'll come back in that post-match, uh, post-match show and bring an analysis on what could go right uh, in that game between the two champions there. Uh, I'm not picking anyone for this big final between the two. Well, we'll leave you here. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us in the studio. It's a pleasure having you here. Well, we'll, you, we'll take you live to Melbourne and catch the action there as the two men walk it out in the middle. Bye-bye.